The rock of Cliff Hill Quarry in Leicestershire is some of the oldest in England. Anything up to a thousand million years, the geologists say. Since 1965, it's been part of the tarmac group. Equipment and facilities have been modernised. The traditional service remains. And so it is with Cliff Hill's rail link. Rail has helped distribute roadstone and aggregate from Cliff Hill almost from the start. Today, its help is better than ever. If the 1980s is the age of the train, then it's especially the age of the company freight train. Every working day, these tarmac wagons make the journey southwards to London and back again, trying to keep pace with the capital's demand for roadstone. The stone is unloaded at the company's new plant at Hayes in Middlesex, and a 50% grant from the Department of Transport helped to pay for the new facilities. The wagons can be unloaded at the rate of 1,250 tonnes an hour. That's about the capacity of a typical train, too. A long-standing partnership between rail and roadstone continues, refreshed and renewed. At Eastleigh in Hampshire, another grant has helped Young's Transport to establish a railhead for the long-distance carriage of general merchandise. This is just one of the expanding number of speedlink trains now operating throughout Britain. And this is another, leaving William Corey's depot at Cardiff. Corey's is a road haulage firm, which has seen the advantage of keeping on the rails. Oil tankers have long been a familiar part of the rail freight scene. But at Firstbrook in Dorset, their presence is both new and rather special. For they serve the oil field that British gas discovered at nearby Witch Farm, the largest onshore field in Britain. The railhead is hidden from distant view by landscape banks. The casual visitor to the area would hardly know it or the oil field was there. The crude oil is taken to Llan Darcy Refinery in South Wales. British Petroleum is a partner in the enterprise. For the early 1980s, a flow of well over 200,000 tonnes a year is expected, a business developing very much along the right lines. Underneath the city of Glasgow, the right lines are taking a rather different form. A new kind of track is being laid in an old kind of tunnel. For nearly all its days, this tunnel serves steam trains. Now it's to be reopened with an electrified service. The use of track laid on a continuous concrete bed means that the tunnels won't have to have their roofs raised to take the overhead wires. Instead, the track can be lowered. It's a British rail development, and it's a money saver. Already, paved track is being used far from Greater Glasgow. It's attracting interest from many parts of Europe. Once laid, track has to be looked after. This class at BR's school at Briar Hill in Northamptonshire is catching up on some of the latest techniques of maintenance. These men are foremen, and they'll take back their new knowledge to teams all over Britain. After the theory comes the practice. Track maintenance has never been more important. With the newest trains running at 125 miles an hour, the demands on the track beneath them can be very arduous. So the modern track maintenance team has to do a lot more than walk the line with a spade and hammer. Their equipment has to be as sophisticated as the new trains they'll be serving. The latest machines not only repack the ballast as they move, but new developments in hydraulic operation and electronic control mean they're quicker and quieter than ever before. isn't much good unless you have really good track to begin with. 
The old Midland line, north out of London St Pancras, kept its original track layouts and its semaphore signalling for over a hundred years. What sufficed for the steam trains of the 1870s won't do for the trains of today. The new junctions being installed between London and Bedford are designed for speedy passage of all types of train. The whole layout has been remodelled. Junction speeds will be increased by 20 to 50 miles an hour. The occasion for change has been electrification. The first stage of work covers Bedford to St Pancras and on to the heart of the City of London at Moorgate. A neglected commuter line being given a reviving boost of power and a big leap into the 1980s. Where the tracks stop, sea-link ships take over. This is the Galloway Princess, one of the newest additions to the fleet. It ferries passengers and vehicles between Stranra and Larne, bringing modern standards of comfort and convenience to a long-established service. Close the doors, settle back in your seats. The Express to France is just about to leave. It isn't a train, but it's still a British rail venture. A sea-speed hovercraft service between Dover and Calais and Dover and Boulogne, which is certainly express. Just 35 minutes to cross the channel. The SRN4 is the world's biggest hovercraft. It shuttles its hundreds of passengers and dozens of cars between purpose-built terminals on either side of the channel in air cushion comfort and at 60 knots. But perhaps the most intriguing notion as to how the transport of the future might look has been put forward in this country by British Rail's Research and Development Division at Derby. It doesn't look much, admittedly. A rather small tram car, a box on wheels. But take a look underneath. No wheels. Indeed, no visible means of support. Not even a cushion of air. But this vehicle is raised above its concrete track by magnets and moves with the aid of linear induction motors. Control is easy. It could be automated. The ride is smooth and quiet. Curves are no problem, nor are gradients an uphill struggle. Is this a vision of the future? Well, this must surely be a vision of the past. 150 years ago, Rocket won the Rainhill Trials, the prize of hauling trains on the new Liverpool to Manchester Railway, the first intercity service. To celebrate the event, the Rainhill Trials are reenacted to the delight of a new public, and Rocket wins again. Its old competitor, Sands Parail, needs a helping hand from Lyon to complete the course, which isn't quite true to history. Here, history does repeat itself. King George V, back on its old stamping ground, heaves a packed train of enthusiasts out of Paddington on a special to Didcot.
Now it's the Flying Scotsman's turn to celebrate. The occasion, 100 years since the first dining car service. A special vintage train ran from Leeds to London with a special vintage champagne lunch for the lucky travellers. For British Rail has a lot to celebrate in this age of the train. Reliving great moments of the past, commemorating a century and a half of service, introducing new trains and services for both people and goods. The Intercity 125 diesel services now handle key expresses north out of King's Cross and west out of Paddington. The next move will be to introduce them on the major cross-country services. The APTs are even newer, even more advanced. They're designed for the electrified main line from London to Glasgow. Could you give us the miles, David, please? Here, the prototype is under test. Speed 95, post 9. Friction brake coming on about 70 miles per hour, TR2, axle 2. Approaching at the junction. 8 and 3. Still on straight track, left hand curve. Left hand curve. The shape of things to come, the shape of the past, the shape of the immediate future the shape of British Rail today in this age of the train.